welcome back guys again and this is bioinformatics practical tutorial and we are talking about primer designing we've learned how to design primers using NCBI suit not using any other softwares uh, for fascination now once you make the primer remember uh, if you don't know this just go back to this first video and uh, look at how we've designed the primers using NCBI so once you design the primers they we've selected five different pairs right because we put the value as five so tell us five different primers and they've told us five different pri primers exactly depending upon our choice so once we find five different primers we need to find out exactly what is whether this five uh, among these five pairs which is going to be a perfect pair for us which is going to be a perfect pair uh, acting uh, for us so we need to check for them right so here we go from the pair number one to pair number five uh, so among them we have in each pair we are having a forward primer we are having a backward primer so we need to look for those primers and check for them whether they will work for us or not so let's let's select each of these so let's take, select the primer number uh, pair number one and the forward primer of primer number one and you can select whether uh, it is going to compatible with our experimental status whether it is going to uh, be good in assays uh, when you put them into the assays because everything will be in assays in in vitro conditions and whether they are good uh, for not forming any pairs because self dimer formation of primer can can really be dangerous for experimental status so so let's let's go back to primer stats and you can view visualize it using a software called sms or sequence manipulation suit and you can find this sequence manipulation suit in this website www.bioinformatics.org/sms2 right and here you can select sequence analysis and here you go here you can paste the raw sequence and uh, just just put them so just put the sequence in here this is the forward primer sequence of my choice and i just put submit it will give me the result now global setting is the primer do not have a 5 prime phosphate don't need to bother about because we will look for that the magnesium ion concentration in the reaction should require 1.5 millimolar and the primer concentration in the reaction required as 200 nanomolar so you can see many useful data will be given by this site to you so once you get this data what we get the primer name is not provided so it's untitled no problem uh, length is provided there number of g a t and c are provided gc content is provided and everything is provided the molecular weight is provided but what we what we are most interested is the pcr suitability test so whether they pass or they got some warning now in this case you can see among these six uh, seven different uh, different parameters they pass only three four is having the warning one warning is that gc is greater than 60 the warning is melting temperature is greater than 58 it is not actually good for uh, running them in 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 vitro conditions and warning is that there are more than c g or c's in the last five bases remember uh, if you go back to my videos when i teach you how to design primers theoretically i've told you that uh, that this these are the things you need to take care of that shouldn't be more gcs in the last five bases because it is going to make it difficult to uh, it, to just cut uh, to just uh, separate out from the template so that's why these things are warnings so that's why it's a very good very good software very good site to provide you actual information so you get this you know right this is not going to be suitable for my actual in vitro assay now not only that but also there are more more than three self annealing bases are there and if those self annealing bases reside there they can a kind of pair with themselves each other and they they can form like hairpins you can see three three hairpin bases are there so they just themselves can form this hairpin and the self hairpin formation is kind of dangerous so so uh, three out of uh, seven is not a good score so we can discard this so we can't take this forward primer for our choice now let's select the second one so let's look for the reverse primer of this same pair let's go to reverse primer where is going on yeah so here we go this is the reverse primer of our choice 20 nucleotides wrong select this let's make it a copy let's make it a copy and let's put it here let's put it here and click submit and here we come with another result and 
it's not it's not that one what what's going on it's not obviously this is not the case so which is the case we need to find this one one minute uh, okay so here we go we need to select this the second one this one so let's select this one copy it and then check for it and check for it whether it works or not let's make submit and here we go and in this 20 nucleotide long this is and let's look at the suitability and if we run PCR suitability test using this primer it is going to be very good because you can see among seven among not actually seven it is eight among eight it passes seven and it's only a kind of warning in one side so it's, it's kind of taken so we can take this we can take this as our primer of choice so this reverse primer is good for our choice now let's select another one in this case now let's select this let's select the next primer so we have a reverse primer but we need to find another forward primer for our choice let's che check this forward primer here let's take this as a forward primer and put the value here and let's submit so we get it so again it passes 4 3 and 4 warning 4 warning 4 pass again chances of hairpin is it's better bad so it won't select it so so we can't select that one so let's select another so we got a good backward primer but forward primers are making us trouble so let's take this forward primer as in this as a forward primer so five set now you need to check every primer like that like this way that's that's my point that's my point you need to check every time to get the exact results until you get satisfied now this is again the same kind of problem but it passes almost most of them so it passes five and it kind of uh, bring for one so this is good this forward primer is kind of good for us now let's check the backward primer of this primer di primer set and the backward primer is this one if it is good then we, we are going to select this primer dimer as as our actual PCR experiment so let's select this one whether it is good yes it is also good it is also good so in fo for both of them for for forward as well as reverse this primer set is found to be good so we can take this primer set among rest of the three so we have checked three primer uh, set uh, three primer uh, couple primer so in this case the primer th third number primer is going to be good because it passes five out of eight of those uh, suitability tests so that's good so that's how you need to check for compatibility whether your primer is going to work exactly okay on your media or not or external uh, external media that is in vitro conditions or not using that sms or sequence manipulation suit once you get it that will be fine so check it and then so i uh, we are also having two left but i'm not doing that for you because the same procedure will be returned so among one two and three three pairs of primer third pair of primer is stand out to be good so you need to check that one right but remind you one thing you should you can't check suppose you get a forward primer best quality forward primer from here you get a best quality for a backward primer for primer uh, pair number one you take one primer from here you take forward from here you take backward from number one that is not possible so don't do that don't make a hodgepodge of those things because the dimer that they provide is also important the dimer compatibility is important and that should be keep contact that should be keep maintained so keep this thing in your mind you should take a primer dimer in whole right so you need to you need to assay for for that you need to look for uh, the susceptibility of that using that uh, using using sms or any tool but look for the dimer you need to take that dimer completely not one from one pair another from another pair we don't do that right so that thing keep that thing in your mind design primers uh, look for suitability and run the experiments and best of luck for the experiment all the very best for the experiments so that's it guys and thank you